Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging as we are playing Star Trek Adventures. We open in with our intrepid cruising through the Karina system in the opening narration, Captain's Log, Stardate 56928.1. The away team has confirmed the presence of a Romulan outpost on Karina 7. The ramifications of Romulan activity in Federation space could easily reignite old tensions, an unsettling prospect in the wake of the Dominion War. Strangely, it does not appear that the Romulans are the cause of the rapid aging effect on the colony of Morgan's Hope. Rather, it is likely that they have been investigating the same phenomenon. My senior staff are investigating now and will report with their findings shortly. And we are opening with our away team having returned to the Intrepid. The Romulan facility has been fully swept over, uh, poured over by security uh, personnel, scientists, engineers. And you've got a few leads that you can pursue. Uh, the Off the top... Uh, the most, the uh, highest priority, I should say, are that you have uh, several Romulans as guests aboard the ship. Captain Shelby has declined to consider them prisoners for diplomatic reasons. They are currently confined to their quarters and can be interviewed. Um, you also know that a Romulan warboard, warbird, the Bellorex, uh, has been in the Karina system very recently and, in fact, may still be in the system for all we know. Um, most of the highly valuable lab equipment was destroyed in the quick evacuation of the Romulan facility. There was only one piece of equipment that the Romulans removed instead of destroyed, and its purpose is unknown. And then finally, the Romulans were searching for a source of tachyon emissions coming from the outer planets of the Carina system, which the Intrepid has been scanning for currently, but you could try to do something to speed that up if you wish. Uh, these are just... Uh, guidelines for you to jump off of if you have any other ideas that you would like to pursue feel free to go uh for it but we're going to combine a montage of what your research has been with our character introductions um derek as always we start with you uh and you the universe is your oyster right now you can do literally anything you would like what would you like to pursue the most um and what would your character describe your character and how they would go about pursuing? Yeah, so I'm a uh, Lieutenant uh, Zarg Zvorgern, um, and I'm a Tellarite. I am the Chief Security Officer, so I'm in charge of the ship's weapon systems. I think in this time, um, because in my time in the academy, I didn't study as much as I should have about cloaking technology. What he's going to be doing is kind of thinking of like, how can you track something that's cloaked? How can you like, what are, what are our options to put up a fight against a cloaked ship um, that could be a threat to us? Well, as we all know, it is impossible. I'm sorry. Uh, so Jeff and I have been, uh, I think there's already a hypothesis like about, this. about this for the past week. Um, it, it is not impossible to track a Romulan uh, warbird, but it is extremely difficult um, and fortunately for you, if you're pouring over uh, past techniques to detect Romulan warbirds, one of which was using a tachyon grid. Um, so, uh, Jeff, I did look into this as well. I suppose that confirms, but you know, you, you didn't come up with the can idea you, of the Star Trek. Can you tell too. me? Can you tell me that I'm right? Because I feel like I deserve <laughs> that. So, anyways, Derek, um, we are going. To <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, if you want to be tracking uh, the Romulan vessel, would you be going about that from a... Or, or you tell me, what would your approach be? How, how would you want to try and pinpoint something that is almost impossible to find? Uh, so he's just going to go off of... Because again, he didn't pay much attention to this in the Academy. So he's thinking like heat signatures, um, like uh, displacement in the environment around a heavy object. Like if something suddenly is moving in this direction and it bounces and changes trajectory, that would be strange. Um, those would be his first two like approaches at it as okay. a non-physicist. Um, so it really sounds like you're coming from a system sensors approach. Um, so I think that would, uh, we could combine that. Like we said, uh, that, you know, that a tachyon grid could help detect, uh, a cloaked Romulan ship. I'm assuming um, if that you're, a, ta a yeah. tachyon grid looks like the battleship thing, like the kids game. Yes, that's exactly what it looks like. You got to put your pins in, you call out B4, and they say you hit my Romulan Warbird. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
But uh, if you're coming at this from a sensors approach, um, I, I think we're going to go... Let's go control engineering on this. Um, and you can essentially try to... You know that there are tachyon bursts already being emitted throughout the system. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you recalibrate calibrate, uh, phasers or deflectors on the Intrepid to get them to bounce in a way that they uh, could possibly triangulate uh, a cloaked ship. Again, this is very difficult to do, though. Uh, it's going to be difficulty five. Um, okay. If you I, fail but get a few successes, I will still give you something. Stephen, so, can I make an argument to get an ex a bonus die for free since uh, the Intrepid has advanced sensor suites? Uh, absolutely. The, the Intrepid does have advanced sensor suites, so get your bonus die. Okay, so that's three die I'm going to roll. And then you mentioned that I could recalibrate or I could use the Intrepid's deflectors. That's interesting because one of my focuses is, a, is in deflector operations. So how would that help me? All right, so that means uh, we're going with engineering for this. So if any of your yep. dice roll under a three, it counts as two successes instead of one. Uh, and remember, you can also spend momentum to get additional dice if you would like. I never mark this down because I always copy off of the awesome. classmates' homework. Who's who's been keeping track of that? Also, uh, the momentum is on the foundry table. Yes, determination Jeff. Oh. would be a really good use right here because it would set one of the dice you're about to roll to one, and since you're uh, using, a so it, it would give you two successes right off the bat. Yes, as a rookie, I would not have thought about that. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and burn, and we should have full determination, right? or is this still part of the previous mission? Uh. This is the same mission. We have okay. not done a second mission yet. Okay. Right. So yeah, I'm going to do that. So one of my dice is automatically a one. So I'm just going to roll the two. All right. Both are under 14, which is my control of my engineering. So that would be four total successes. And then I guess, would I take a momentum to roll another dice then? You have to uh, say that before you're going to roll. Yeah, I just thought of that. In fact, I was too uh, gung-ho to roll. <laughs> uh, so that is four successes you needed five like I said I will still give you something you're doing a very heavy sensor sweep of the area um, and you're specifically focusing on tachyons as well uh, you are not able to determine the location of any warbirds that does not mean that there is no warbird in the, uh, the system but it means that you're not able to find one specifically now however you do get a uh, very high quality uh, data on the tachyon emissions uh, that have been coming through. Uh, you're getting a essentially a subharmonic analysis of this. Um, and it, it is showing you that uh, the emissions are happening in bursts and you have patterns of these emissions and they are uh, increasing in, in these bursts. Uh, it, it does not appear to be natural uh, from all the data that you've accumulated in the system so far, it appears as if in the last several hours, these bursts are becoming more and more frequent. Okay. Is there anything so, you'd like to follow up with that? Or are you good? Um, yes. Being the local hypothesis maker, I'm going to hypothesize that Commander Van Vice Danko would be better at recognizing patterns. So I'm assuming I can like, what's what does a tricorder do? Does it have like text messaging? Can I text? Uh, you have, generally does. <laughs> you have a communicator you on your uh, uniform there. Oh, that's uh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the tricorder is more right. of like a sensor type thing, but it can do like it's sci-fi, so you can do a lot of things with that. Sure. Okay, yeah, I'll then I'll do the double tap on the chest and say, uh, Commander Dango, uh, I believe I have some patterns that maybe something you could pull something out of with these tack munitions. Uh, do are we gonna go out of order? You want me to go next, Steven? It's up to you. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead. We'll go out of okay. order here. Uh, so that's right. fine. Uh, so Danko. Who are you? What do you look okay. like? Okay. And what are you I'm doing? I'm Vice Danko. I am. Uh, I am a trail science officer of some age in his golden years. Uh, his hair is uh, is relatively uh, tall, if not clean along the edges, 
and he is uh, he is definitely grayed, uh, and in some cases white. Um, and when you buzz into him, uh, you, what you hear uh, as as he like responds to you is the sound of like flamenco music and stuff going on. And we like cut over, and we see he's once more in his personal office laboratory area, and he's got all these different systems running, these different uh, these different algorithmic computations going on. Uh, and I like to think what he has been working on lately is what he was very interested in doing last time, which is taking the communications logs of the uh, of that site and whenever and you said that they were specifically contacting the Bellatrix and now and he's been kind of going through seeking if he can like essentially use what they were when they were communicating where they were sending the communications to to try to predict like to be a have like a predictive algorithm for movement and try and track like where where the but where wherever the the receptor of those communications was and see if I can find a predictive algorithm for where it's going, maybe figure out uh, it's like it's orbital pattern. And then now with this like extra bit of data that I can then dovetail with my uh, with my computations, I might be able to pinpoint even more accurately where where this signal might be going to. Um, I don't think that tachyon subharmonic analysis is going to help you with the uh, pinpointing because he wasn't able to determine a general location there. Um, well, we already have but, a general location. It is the outer regions of the Carina system where they have specifically been looking for the source of tachyon. It's a very large general location. Okay. Carina 9, 10, or 11, was it? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I do like this, though. Um, and I would say with yeah with him putting in the effort uh to also be looking for the ship um whether it's through the subharmonic analysis or just general sensor sweeps and then you doing that let's go ahead and get a difficulty four roll here uh we're we're lowering it from five to four okay uh is science reason okay to roll um i i would say I think the way you would be going about this most, it sounds like you're going at this from an engineering perspective because you were specifically looking at like the angles that the uh, transmissions were sent, the directions that they were received from. Uh, it seems more like you're going into like the the actual code uh, of the transmitters to try and determine where they're coming from. Uh, if I, I disagree. Could... Because uh, okay. I feel like there's no hardware being involved here. Like this is purely like a mathematical, like computational model. So this is all about like just mathematical precision. So I'm okay. not go for it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. Can I use my pattern uh, recognition? Absolutely. Pattern recognition is perfect for this. And do we have? Do we have any momentum in the in the pool? We got four <laughs> left over from last week. If it's still there. It's up to you, Steven. Uh, yes. Uh, so I'm not taking it away in between sessions, but I am lowering it by one per scene, and I already did that. Okay. okay. So I am going to take three so I can get two extra dice. Uh, I don't want to burn any determination because I've already done that, and I'm down to one. So uh, I'm just going to give it a rip and hope for the best. And remember, sure if you play into your values or you play contrary to your values, you can recover determination during the mission. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but then I'd have to like reset it or something by the end of it, I believe. To change yeah, if you, it in if, some way. If, you, if you're contrary to it, you lose it. If you play into it, you get a complication automatically. But yeah, four successes. I can do this. So, okay, I can do this. Okay. Uh, well, I rolled a one, so that's a good start. All right, that's uh, two right away. And nice. then I have two more successes, so that's four successes. But I also rolled a lolly, which is a d, which is a twenty. So that's also a complication. So a success and a complication. I was complication. all over the place on that one. Yeah. All right. Uh, would you like to try and buy off that complication with threat? Uh, you know what, man? Um, no. It's yours. Complicate my life. Go ahead. All right. You have pinpointed uh, the exact path that the Bellarix has been uh, essentially patrolling throughout this uh, time in, in the system. 
uh, and you have an actual pattern that you have recognized of how it has been circling various parts of the system. You can tell it was doing a sensor sweep of some sort. It's very basic flight patterns that it would be going across. The complication is that with the arrival of the Intrepid, the Bellerix has ceased that pattern uh, and has completely changed whatever uh, direction they would have been going. Um, I, I, with the success, though, you know for certain that they honed in on Karina 10. Okay. Um, so he will uh, he will tap his communicator and he'll like contact the captain and he'll say, Dan, uh, Captain Shelby? Or was it, what was that? Cap- Captain Shelby? Shelby? Uh, yes, Danko. Uh, I believe I've uh, isolated the specific uh, body in the the outer regions of the Korean sector that the Romulans seem to have been most interested in. It is uh, Korean 10. You said 10, right? Yes. Okay. So he's like, uh, K- Korean 10, I believe. Uh, I can uh, I can forward you all of my mathematical models if you wish to, uh, to peruse them yourself to verify the data. But I'm quite confident. And I must say, uh, 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 Lieutenant Commander Devorgan was quite... Uh, quite exceptional uh, in assisting me in this matter. Yes, forward the data. Uh, Karina 10, that is interesting. That is a gas giant with quite a few rings around it. Uh, Commander, and she's speaking to someone else on the bridge, but it's still coming through the the communications. Set course for Karina 10. Make sure to put maximum sensors and stay on red alert. Danko, is there any other information that do you know anything more precise than the planet Uh, nothing as of yet Uh, I will continue to study and when we get closer I might be able to modify uh, our senses to have a more thorough sweep specifically of the composition of the rings Um, would we have any data um, just like in our databases of what yes Uh, so you would know basic information about the rings Um, Mm -hmm. this planet itself is the reason why sensor sweeps are taking so long in the system uh, mm-hmm. The rings, they are incredibly dense and incredibly diverse. Um, so you cannot actually travel the Intrepid through any of these rings. It, it is too diver- too dense. And the diversity of elements, uh, it, it's essentially, it makes your sensors go haywire. Uh, everything starts bouncing off it the wrong way. They interact with each other very poorly. Um, and it makes it very difficult to do a sensor sweep. But... Uh, that doesn't mean that you cannot actually scan the planet or anything like that. It takes time, and uh, often you have to rely on visual sweeps as well. So now okay. that you know that Karina 10 is there, the Intrepid is going, uh, likely it'll be a visual sweep that happens as you're looking for anything out, out of the ordinary, and then you can hone in your sensors. So he'll just like reiterate the notion of, mm-hmm. of, of that, which I'm sure the captain already knows, but yeah. then... But then rest rest assured, I will continue to see if there's any modifications we can do to the sensors to help penetrate some of the ring's uh, more difficult byproducts. Um, Until then, uh, I'm going to return to this data. Even though the Bellatrix has left its normal patterns, uh, perhaps there's something we can learn about its its behaviors, the behaviors of the captain. And so, like, I'm thinking back to, like, this is stupid, but the hunt for the red October, how at the bottom half of every hour, like no, the crazy that, that's, so that's, that's what I'm absolutely for. something that you guys can do. Uh, and you yeah. have information dossiers on a lot of Romulan officials. Um, yeah. And that would be a type of security role if you want to try and uh, get insight in, into the, the mind of the captain. You'd be able to find information on that. Uh, okay. But uh, the commander tells you excellent work. Uh, and then she sets the bridge. Uh, and we're going to cut back to uh, Dr. Uh, I, I tried to start with your last name, so but I'm moving on to the first name, Dr. No. Tellis. Uh, Kipser, <laughs> who are you playing? What do you look like? And what are you doing? Dr. Tallis Nostrum Azolor. I don't I don't know why you think that's so that's difficult. What I said. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I of said. Of course, of course. Uh, but yeah, Dr. Tallis to pretty much everyone because that is complicated. Um, Dr. Talis is half Andorian, half Betazoid. Uh, she's got the blue skin and the antennae. Uh, and last we checked, uh, we had found that medical facility on in the sort of behind the power generator of the Romulan base. Did we find anything in there? Uh, all of the information that you, uh, all of the oh. uh, 
resources that would have been in the facility are now uploaded to the Intrepid's computers. Okay. Um, so is there anything specifically that you'd be looking for, any sort of angle that you're pursuing? Definitely, um, she would be things like computer show the last 40 samples of what the current Romulan projects were from the medical facility. And she would ask, or well, <clears throat> yeah, bruh. Uh, so the actual facility that you found uh, in the Romulan <laughs> facility was not medical. It was mm -hmm. a, a clean lab, mm -hmm. but it was more of a, a tech purpose than medicine. Uh, it, it was as if they were building something there. Then I suppose the last 40 samples of whatever project would still pull up the uh, the the tech project they were doing. And uh, it should be it'll be off time when she's not in medical in making sure. Yeah, bro, make sure you splint that and everything. You got to like totally just let it flow through you sometimes. Um, and she would try to see if there was anything that had, uh, yeah, see what was being built and if she can figure out what their end goal was. Okay. Um, this will be, uh, normally it would be difficulty three to mm -hmm. try and piece together everything, but it's on the Intrepid's computers now and that is able to help collate and piece things together. And while most of the information has been corrupted or erased, there is a chance that you'll be able to glean some insights. Um, so this would definitely be, uh, this would be, I think, science insight as you're trying to determine what science they were working on. Sure, science insight. Um, and I do have, so if I'm working, could I possibly, I know that, uh, well, hold on. Um, yeah, I know that Danko was working with uh, Devorgan, but maybe I would pull him in on this as well and kind of show him some of the results I was seeing uh, and triage with him a little bit. That's definitely not triage. Uh, <laughs> I know. I, I'm going to push back on that one. Doctor, not right, know what triage right. means. Uh, we should yeah, just throw the words out to see how it lands. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm building up to some bullshit when I she start feels like, like, slowing down how I'm saying it. She's like Scott I, I don't think you could pull in. Quantum Leap, just using terms and hoping they're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like uh, impro... No, um, okay, sure. So, I, I don't I think you could pull in Donko because he's sure. working on his own projects. All right, uh, then I will. And dancing. <laughs> yeah, and dancing. Uh, yeah, you hear some uh, like Beach Boys going on in the background for Talus. Um, okay, so you said insight and science. Uh, that yes. is a twelve. I'm just gonna roll straight. I rolled a four and a ten, so that is two successes. Okay, you needed three. Uh, so I. I... Did you have a focus um, that you were using other than triage? I don't really Would it have, have even mattered with science? Uh, what, no, what's your... with the science is three, so I wouldn't have gotten below, no. Um, okay. Yeah, so I can only get two successes on that. All right, uh, so that is a fail, mm -hmm. uh, but you are still able to piece some things together. Um, very broadly, you know that it was based on uh, tachyon research. Mm -hmm. um, as everything in this sector appears to be revolving around now. Um, you know that this was some sort of weaponized device mm -hmm. um, or something for a military purpose. Whether it is an actual weapon or, or not, uh, it, it was not something that was meant to uh, cure the people of the colony or mm -hmm. prevent tachyon. Uh, emissions. This was meant to enhance them in some way. Okay. Uh, so she'll just like double tap the comms. Uh, yeah, bro, Captain. Yes, Doctor. Uh, so like those Romulans were totally just working on some sort of weapon that would enhance the issue instead of any way of uh, resolving it. Just FYI. Understood. For diplomacy's sake. Perhaps in that case, it would be good for you to focus your efforts on determining if there's a way to uh, cure the effects of these tachyon emissions. Yeah, totally. Aye, aye. <laughs> the comic <laughs> <guys>. <laughs> I'm killing Aaron every time, uh, but I love it. 
<laughs> we are going to cut on the to, bridge. Uh, on the bridge, Shelby turns to like the ends, <laughs> like to like the ends, and just like, how, what? How did we get stuck with her again? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even know what triage means. <laughs> <laughs> the Enterprise has Crusher. Like, come on, how did I we? Know, right? Like, can, can we just get an emergency medical hologram? We, we, just we have that? an emergency medical hologram. <laughs> okay. <on the> front. <laughs> We're going to <laughs> <laughs> Someone call Robert Picardo. We're going to have him guest star. Oh, fantastic. Uh, all right, Melissa, uh, we're cutting to you. Who are you playing? Uh, what do you look like? And what it, are you pursuing here? Uh, so I am uh, Commander Hessel. Uh, she is the uh, communications officer. She is a kind of like upper middle age uh, Denobulan uh, woman. She sort of like has resting stern face, but she's actually like relatively friendly with folks. Um, she was going to, um, as a little bit of preparation, she was going to try to see if she can make sure since um, we do have some uh, folks that are on our ship try to make sure that she is able to kind of uh kind of make some changes within the kind of the food processor so that we can kind of get some good kind of like romulan food for them so that uh when she goes and kind of chats with the folks that are here that we can get them some good food i i don't think that's a problem you'd be able to recalibrate the replicators y you wouldn't even have to do that personally if you don't want to you could assign a team to do that um, and you would be able to send them like uh, uh, culture specifics on like how they could uh, calibrate the replicators too. And it, it'll never be perfect. Even uh, humans don't like necessarily replicator food. They they prefer the real thing. It, it's not that replicators are awful, but there's just you know that little bit of oh this isn't quite real. This isn't like Mama made it. Uh, so you'll be able to get it close uh, without a roll or anything like that. You're able to uh, focus some time on that uh, and. If that's your case, then it would make it easier to interrogate the Romulans later, we'll say. Uh, yeah, or and, and is was, there anything else you'd like to pursue investigative-wise? Uh, it was definitely towards the kind of diplomacy, cultural expert interrogation side of things. Um, she was potentially going to kind of reach out to Lieutenant Commander Argent, uh, possibly for a little of... Uh, good cop, bad cop uh, interrogation uh, with our folks that are our guests. Uh, so, Argent, uh, we'll, we'll get to your introduction, but first, yes or no, is this what you would like to spend your time doing, or would yes. you like to investigate something else? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, Argent's all about skull fucking some okay. Romulans. <laughs> <laughs> Very Star Trek. Good, Very Star good, Trek. Good cop, uh, uh, evil cop. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Good Commander luck, Hessel, Commander uh, Hessel. <laughs> is working on the replicator, uh, and she has uh, called out to uh, the lieutenant commander uh, that you have uh, that she will be interviewing the Romulans, and you are invited to come along. Uh, Aaron, what do you look like, uh, and what does this look like as you approach Hessel? So, Lieutenant Commander uh, Elro Argent is a uh, Betazoid. He is middle aged. Uh, he's fit average height. He's got uh, short, uh, dark brown hair and a military cut. He looks very human. He's got uh, pale blue eyes. Um, he, he's got a, a ready smile, but it never quite gets to his eyes. Uh, and he's known, I mean, as, as all Betazoids, he's known for being blunt, brutally honest, and casually using telepathy to scan people's minds. It's just how who they are. So... Uh, privacy is kind of a weird concept to him, but he would definitely, uh, Commander Hessel, that sounds good. I'm, uh, I want to do a, uh, oh, the tag has got him. We need the to attack. <laughs> you want to do a skull is... fuck with this problem. <laughs> 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 It was past 60 seconds, right? It, it, it sounded like <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Argent said that he wanted to uh, roll out the red carpet for them and bring them yeah, to the uh, food. Yeah, really nice. Feel, I guess. And, must uh, have been kind. what he said. Yeah, Argent is totally so sweet and kind-hearted. Must know, he's have just been it. A warm, loving individual. It was so not it. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, are, are you back, Aaron? No? Okay. I'm back. Okay. 
so yes, I'm not a kind-hearted individual. I was not rolling out the red carpet. Um, I was going to look into Starfleet intelligence files to see if I could pull up any information on the specific uh, Romulan subcommander that we captured um, at this facility. Uh, okay. And the idea is that I want to basically develop a trait called uh, our interrogation approach that'll help reduce the difficulty of our interrogation if we've got background information on them already. Yeah, uh, so that would be reason command. Um, and we're going to say that this is a, this is again, you're trying to pull up uh, dossier information on Romulans. Um, so this will be a difficulty of four. Okay, I am going to momentum, one momentum we've got to pick up an extra die. Uh, and I'm going to give you that, Stephen, to get a fourth die. Okay. Uh, I do have a focus investigation. Um, and you, that was going to be control security? Uh, reason command. Uh, oh, reason as command. you're okay. trying to cool. d determine their command structure, essentially. That's uh, less than a 13. I got an 11, a 13, a 4, and a 19. So that's four successes. Four successes. It was difficulty four, so you just barely made it. Um, so you only know the name of uh, the subcommander that you've... Uh, uh, sorry, that you've captured. Um, subcommander Detok was his name. Mm -hmm. He has not given any more information yet. But combining that with the uh, Warbird Bellarex, uh, you know that there uh, are uh, several uh, dossiers that pull up. You know that the captain of the Bellarex is a Romulan named Commander Merok. Um, and he rose rapidly through the ranks of the Romulan military through the Dominion War, uh, thanks to his cunning and calculated risk-taking. He's known for allowing no dissent among his crew uh, and expects everyone to excel at every task they are assigned to. A very stereotypical Romulan in that sense. Um, and you also pull up information on the Bellarex where uh, it has a history of being assigned to outposts on distant and frigid worlds. Uh, it is essentially one of their explorer, uh, not necessarily the explorer, but... Uh, their version of a military discovery vessel. Uh, uh, it's still very much a military vessel, but it emphasizes science more than most Romulan warbirds would. Mm -hmm. um, Commander Detok, uh, you know, is a... Uh, I'm sorry, Sub-Commander Detok, you would know that he's been assigned to the uh, Bellarex for some time. Uh, uh, at least a couple years, which kind of aligns for when the Bellarex putting together the timeline and arrived in the Karina system about two years ago is when this assignment started. Um, and uh, co Sub-Commander Detok uh, is specifically a scientist. So he is assigned to the Bellarex, but he is not actually a permanent staff on the Bellarex. And uh, we'll, we'll be able to say that using that information, you'll be able to get some bonuses when interrogating him along with uh, the Romulan food that Commander Hessel is bringing. Uh, so the two of you, uh, you head to the quarters, and there are two security personnel um, outside of the quarters, um, one of which is uh, Lieutenant Commander Jedediah Cole, uh, the very reliable taciturn soldier. Uh, he's standing outside, and he gives you an, a nod as you approach. Again, doesn't say much. Uh, he, he's got the bald, scarred face, uh, and he's happy to just look ahead at the wall, not because he's not intelligent, but because he is just so focused and dedicated to his duty uh, that he his attention will not waver. Um, the door glides open. Uh, as you walk through, uh, it, you have security passes to interview Subcommander Detok. You know that the Romulans have been separated. They're not allowed to be together right now. Uh, but this is the highest ranking Romulan that uh, you have on board the Intrepid right now. Uh, and you see him uh, sitting at a desk uh, attempting to access computer files. Uh, and he is speaking to the computer. He is tapping away on a pad. Uh, and each time you hear that, er, er, access denied, access denied, er, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear you. 
Uh, I was just saying enhance. Like, mm, enhance. Enhance, yeah. <laughs> enhance. <laughs> Uh, so he's not been able to get through anything, but he is trying. Uh, when you approach, uh, he slaps down the pad and then stands up. Well, it is about time. I am not... I am not going to give you any information, and I demand that I be returned to the Romulan Empire at once. This is a breach of numerous treaties and is unacceptable. Yes, yes, yes. I understand all of these things. Uh, but at the moment, it seems like it's about time for some food. So, you know, we can start from there and we can have our conversations here. And she lays out this, like, Romulan. Yeah, you put down the, the tray thing. with mm -hmm. all, all the fixings on it. Uh, and he takes a look at it, pulls up a spoon or a fork of whatever it is. replicator I assume and then just drops mm. the fork best that we can do well some commander to talk welcome to the intrepid uh, we will take under advisement your request to be returned to the Romulan Empire uh, but we probably need to adjudicate the instance of you violating the neutral zone setting up a secret camp on a Federation outpost and potentially developing a weapon to be used against the Federation on our own planet. But I mean, that's, we'll get to that. But do you really want to go back to Commander Merrick? A failure captured by the Federation? Your men captured by the Federation? I mean, as a scientist, I think... I could run the numbers, and based on what I know of Romulan disciplinary measures, I'm not sure I would want to go back to face my commander when I have failed so astronomically to meet his minimum standards. And who am I speaking to? Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander Argent. And? Commander Hessel. Lieutenant Commander, Commander, these are very, very outrageous accusations. A hidden base. We merely had a misunderstanding. Our ship had a navigational error, and we needed to temporarily set up repairs on the outpost of Karina 7. Of course, this is all a vast misunderstanding. There would never be any sort of harm. When we noticed the Tachyana missions, of course we wished to help the Federation any way we could. While our ship was making repairs, we have been making efforts to reduce the emissions or possibly reverse the emissions. You may thank me. I think based on the information that we were able to glean from your very poor attempt at destroying your base. Uh, we're fairly certain of what we have in front of us, and we, if forced to put you in this situation, we will present it to the Federation Council as evidence of Romulan incursion into Federation space. Now, of course, I expect your commander will simply say that you went rogue with a group of officers um, and tell the Federation to put you in, I don't know, maybe a Klingon penal colony uh, on a frozen moon in the middle of nowhere until you die. I think that would be the least embarrassing thing for the Romulan High Command to do. Of course, there are other options. If, let's say, you were cooperating with the Federation to help us deal with this tachyon threat, it could be announced that the Romulans were in fact assisting us, but we would actually need assistance from you, a Romulan scientist, to ensure that this situation was resolved before we could communicate with your commander and return you to the Romulans as a hero? to your people 
or a Klingon prison world. It doesn't matter to me too much. We'll get to the bottom of it without you, but with you, it would be a little quicker. Well, you are quite fortunate, as I have said, that I already was assisting the Federation with my tachyon research. Um, and I, I'm essentially saying that this would have been a difficulty two uh, mm -hmm. challenge here, but uh, you found the background information and Commander Hessel, you made the effort to reach them. That lowers it to difficulty zero. Um, if either of you would like to roll to try and build up momentum, you can, but there is a chance of complications that could backfire. Um, I will take a roll from either of you. Um, it, it, Aaron, if it's coming from you, it would be presence security. Um, Hessel, if it's coming from you, I think it would be presence con. I, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, presence con. Presence security for me is 16. 15 for me, so go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, remember focuses too, though, because yep. they can help. Um, uh, I have persuasion as a focus. So persuasion, we'll go here. Diplomacy as a focus, so go for it. And can Commander Hustle aid me? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that makes sense here. Uh, so, Commander Hessel, you would be rolling, uh, we'll say again, uh, Presence Con. Uh, okay, and you so can I'm both rolling... use your focuses. One die. Okay. And he has so to get a success for one. yours to count. Okay. So, um, I am going to spend a point of determination uh, to set one die to one because I think we want some momentum. But I'm also going to, so I'm running, I think I'm running contrary to my one of my values. And the value is a lie is a story told in bad faith, implying that you don't lie to get your point across. And I've obviously made some, I played pretty free with the truth in this discussion with him. Yeah, you would have no authority to ter determine where he would end up. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to strike that value out. Do I get and so I'd get my point of determination back after I spent it? Does that work? Okay. Okay. So I set one die to a one. My other roll was an eleven, which is under, but uh, not the focus. But it's not. It's not a focus. So I got a total of three successes. Command and Hessel. Hessel? Uh, yeah, I rolled a fourteen, which is under fifteen. Uh, not under my focus, obviously. So All right. So obviously five moments. That is four momentum that you've built up. Five. Or four. Sorry. You got three and Hessel got one. Yeah. Yep, so yep. four momentum total. Um, but uh, you essentially caught him in his little trap where he, in a trap of his own making, where he said that he was attempting to help the Federation. And you said, well, good. If you're helping the Federation, then continue helping. Um, and he does open up a little bit. Um, he claims that the Bellarex. Uh, finished its repairs and left the system. Unfortunately, it was a hasty evacuation as understandably so, with a, the arrival of a Federation ship, we did not think it would look appropriate for us to still be here and as our repairs were mostly finished, the Bellarex left slightly ahead of schedule. We made an evacuation to ensure that we would leave no lasting impact on your colony. They are unharmed, uh, we have done nothing to hinder uh, any Federation values. Uh, that platitude sounds wonderful. However, that does not get me from point A to point B, where point A is we know there's a problem with the tachyon emissions, and point B is fixing that problem. So you're a scientist, you've been researching this tachyon emission, so provide me some actual scientific evidence that helps me to solve this problem, or I'm gonna treat you like a spy. My team was not able to determine the exact cause of the tachyon pulses, but we did determine that it was artificial. There was some sort of device near the 10th planet of Karina that was emitting these tachyon pulses. It was at a regular frequency and it had been happening for several years. You were rather fortunate that my ship, the Bellarex, was equipped with a unique tachyon sensor array. 
Uh, it is far greater than anything you in the Federation would have. It is capable of detecting tachyons at dozens of light years away. When the Bellarex was damaged, we were attempting to, what is your Federation phrase, kill two birds with one stone. We were simply trying to determine the cause of the tachyons and prevent them from causing your colony any harm out of the graciousness of our hearts. We were developing a piece of equipment that could contain the tachyon bursts. Fortunately, the Bellarex was able to transport that equipment off planet. I'm sure by now it is back in the Romulan Empire, but as we are a gracious people, much more free with our resources than the Federation ever would be, we would surely be willing to trade with you to return it. That's fascinating. Uh, and we really appreciate the, the willingness of the Romulans. And I'm doing surface scans of his mind the entire time. So I'm not trying to pick out any, any gleans of information, particularly as I say this part, I'm like, so as you know, obviously since the Bellarex has left the system, we still have to deal with this artificial tachyon emission source uh, out at Karina 10, somewhere in that vicinity. Uh, we're heading there now. Fortunately for us, uh, we'll be able to call in the resources of some larger Federation warships to help. So it's good that the Bellarex is not here uh, because we would hate to see that sort of misunderstanding uh, reignite hostilities along the neutral zone. Um, did I pick up any surface thoughts from him when I made those? Yes. Uh, so throughout this whole conversation, you've been able to determine, we'll, we'll say this is without a roll because you already lowered the difficulty and you already passed. Um, you're able to tell that he's still telling half truths. Mm -hmm. um, he is giving you information that is partially true. But he, of course, is trying to hide his motives, hide the true uh, involvement uh, of the Romulan Empire. It, it's safe to say that they were not here from a uh, damaged ship. They came here specifically. They were looking for something with these tachyon bursts as well. Um, however, the actual broad strokes, uh, he's not lying about Karina 10. They did develop some sort of item that would be able to help contain tachyon bursts whether that's a good thing or not uh, is to be determined. Um, with the mention of more Federation ships, uh, you you get a general sense of unease, but not necessarily fear or anything okay. like that. So, uh, Subcommander, um, since you were the scientist responsible for helping to develop uh, that tachyon containment system uh, and you've already shown your willingness to assist and have already told us that the Romulans would allow us to have a copy of it. Why don't you go ahead and provide me, uh, our science department, the general schematics of, of the system that you designed? Why, certainly, I would love to. Show me to your science lab uh, and grant me computer access and I will be sure to give you all of my data. We'll have us. We'll have some of the members of the science team come and, and they can, uh, and you can sit down with them and have a discussion about the device. Well, as I have said, I have nothing but desire to help the Federation. And of course, you're he's very much lying. Uh, and we have he, nothing. We have nothing but desire to see you return to the Romulan Empire uh, to receive all the accolades that you truly deserve. Uh, and uh, Melissa, unless you have something else to add, we'll go ahead and cut it there as he does agree to assist with a science lab, whether it's because he wants access to the computers or whether because he's a scientist and he wants to learn as much as he can about the Federation. Uh, he, he does agree to give some information about the tachyon bursts uh, and a, a security team and a science team uh, are uh, being allocated to his room uh, to work with that. Uh, and he'll uh, give you the basics of information there. Uh, let's go ahead and call this a trait. Um, we'll, we'll call this a tachyon res information primer, something along those lines. Uh, if someone wants to add that to our active traits uh, so that you, you can get a boost if it comes to uh, 
working with tachyons later. Uh, with that, uh, you are all summoned to the bridge. As you all arrive, uh, two, three at a time on the turbo lift, uh, you enter the bridge, you see uh, that Commander Shelby, Captain Shelby, is sitting in her chair, uh, and on the view screen, you have visual confirmation of an anomaly in Karina 10. Uh, here, I'm going to pull up a handout for you all. Uh, sorry, one second. There we go. You see a Federation starship, the USS Hamilton. And this is a ship that is 200 or more years old. Uh, the, the Hamilton is... Uh, uh, it was decommissioned at least 40 years ago. Ships of this class have not been in the fleet for quite some time. Uh, and even before the Dominion War, uh, they were already being decommissioned uh, and they would have been used not for exploration, but more for like freight and infrastructure uh, and just general support roles uh, because they had become so outdated. Commander Shelby looks at you all. Well, it seems that we have found the source of our tachyon emissions, the USS Hamilton. We have already pulled up the registry, NCC-114 Constitution class. According to Federation records, the ship was decommissioned nearly 40 years ago. The records indicate that the ship was stripped of all of its core components. They were recycled. The metals uh, were reused per Federation standard procedure in decommissioning starships. And yet, for some reason, the Federation is right there on our main view screen. Well, clearly it looks like that uh, this ship is out of time, so to speak. I mean, we can just tell from the visuals that it hasn't been fully decommissioned. So this must be a USS Hamilton from an earlier time or... Uh, it is an elaborate ruse, one of the two. How long would it Indeed. take to send a message to, uh, to Starfleet and get confirmation that the Hamilton has actually like been put in sort of dry dock or decommissioned? Like, 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 is there a you would have... is it physically there somewhere? Uh, so the Hamilton, the records say that. It they actually went through and cut it to pieces and mm -hmm. reused the metal. Like the records say that it was literally torn apart uh, and recycled. Um, everything about it, uh, it, the the paperwork itself looks extremely proper. Uh, confirming that with Starfleet could be instantaneous if you would like, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I will be asking for a roll if, if that's the case. Uh, essentially, from the ship's computers, you can access all these records. But if you want to dig into more background about it, that would be a rule. Is, is the ship under power or is there life support? It appears that there is still some power in the ship. And as you're watching on the view screen, occasionally here and there, you do see a flicker of light, uh, like a, a arc of electricity here and there. For some... It appears that there is still power structurally. It is falling apart. It, Life signs? The rings of the planet make it impossible to scan. And uh, transport, transport Chief uh, McRae has told me that it would be impossible to beam over as well. And any attempt to transport over would be fatal for the away team. Lieutenant Commander Argent, do your due diligence, but uh, I think you should bring the same away team that has familiarity with these tachyon bursts uh, and take a shuttle and see if there is any way to salvage the Hamilton, uh, recommission her. Uh, perhaps we can bring her home and get to the bottom of this. Will do, Captain. Um, obviously, you've seen our transcripts and heard the recordings of the discussion we had with the sub commander i have no doubt that bellorex is out here looking for this ship um so we should maintain red alert 
Of course. Uh, and uh, this whole time the ship's been on a steady red alert. The shields have been up. Uh, we have sensors at maximum. If they reveal themselves, we will be ready. Uh, Commander Danko, uh, bro, uh, Lieutenant Commander Argent, what about uh, like time crystals or anti-time? That's anti-time? It is, uh, it's probably best that we take a look at the the ship itself before we formulate too, uh, too firm a hypothesis. Uh, the presence of the tachyon pulses. That's one thing I was kind of wanting to ask is the, according to the, um, according to the testimony of the, of Subcommander, there have been regular tachyon emissions. Is this the source of those regular tachyon emissions? So now that you have uh, visually confirmed uh, the Hamilton is there, you're able to target your sensors. This is 100% the source of the tachyon okay. emissions. Um, so when you were able to essentially hone in on Karina 10, that's when you're able to visually confirm. And then when you can target your sensors, you're able to uh, pick up on it a little bit easier. Um, also, the sub commander said that the tachyon emissions were regular. Uh, mm -hmm. But Danko, you, I'm sorry, Dvorgan, you realized that they had sped up, uh, which mm -hmm. does conflict with uh, his report. Okay. Not we necessarily also, that he was lying, but that something changed. Sorry. Right. We also need to be prepared for the Romulans uh, in case they've already boarded the ship themselves. So, uh, Dvorgan, uh, make sure you arm out with a Type 3 phaser, everybody else, Type 2 phasers. And I want a security team. Uh, on standby in the backup shuttle in case we need a secondary uh, squad deployed to the Hamilton. All right. Uh, so you're able to get the gear just fine. Uh, would you like to look in any more into the Hamilton before you head over? Uh, or are you prepared to just go and yeah. try to find information? Yeah, Dink See, see Dinko wants to double check something because like he, he does want to try to dig into the records of decommissioning um i know that we're all like jumping to this and that but i do think it's like it, there could be a much simpler explanation to why it's here and that it wasn't actually decommissioned and it was just some sort of like black ops specialty science mission thing and it's not necessarily parallel universes kind of stuff so i don't i, I don't know if danko would jump to it and it feels weird to jump to that so he wants to, um, like, he would like to try to see if there's any records, any confirmation, anything, not just, like, what's officially on record, but, like, shipyards. Like, shipyard inventory record, things like that might not necessarily be forged or, or doctored in some way. Like, like things like that. And try to see if there's any, any information about, like, who the, you know, who the most recent crew captain, commander, and such was. Because, yeah, yeah. like... Uh, so, so this like is going to be yet. reason engineering difficulty two. Okay. I'm able to assist with this. The only reason I ask is because I have a Starfleet protocol focus, and I don't know if that would be useful in a situation. That like absolutely this. would be useful. Yeah, you, you could okay. absolutely assist, which means you'll also roll reason engineering. Mm -hmm. um, and with your focus, uh, if you get under your engineering, it counts as two successes. While Danko's looking into that, uh, Argent would be downloading the mission logs for the last year of the USS Hamilton before it went into dry dock for decommissioning, just to see if it didn't had any odd missions that dealt with temporal anomalies or anything of that nature. Absolutely. Uh, that won't require a check. You're able to access those just fine. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, I had uh, do. So you roll one dice when you're assisting, One correct? die when you're assisting, yes, correct. yeah. Okay, so I only rolled an 18, which is above a 14. Just couldn't find anything. Okay. okay. Um, all right, uh, I'm going to take two of that momentum then. Uh, what's the difficulty? Two. Okay, so... Difficulty two. I'm going to... And it's engineering, reason engineering. Um, okay, I'll take... Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and take three momentum so I can get two extra dice. Uh, okay, so that's going to be... I don't have any focus to apply to, so I hit my two. Yeah, just two successes. 
Yeah, no, no momentum, just two. Well, that's enough. Um, and essentially, you, you start looking at this from a roundabout way, like looking at shipyards, looking at where the recycled material would go. None of those shipyards, none of the, the places that would receive those uh, materials ever have any receipt of the shipment even existing. Yeah. Uh, so while when you look specifically at the Hamilton and it's everything looks prim and proper on the other side, it doesn't exist. Um, yeah. You were able to essentially find an additional file on the Hamilton as you start combing through uh, Starfleet proto security protocols. You're able to bypass them uh, to learn. Uh, and we'll combine this uh, essentially with Argent. You're looking up the, the missions. You would know uh, that uh, the Hamilton's last mission is uh, erased just completely erased. So you're able to go through, uh, and like I said, it was doing basic sort of science tasks. Um, it was often used uh, for prototype uh, uh, equipment whenever Starfleet was developing new equipment and they wanted to test it on a ship for practical reasons. They wouldn't necessarily put it on their flagship because that could have a chance of risk. They would put it on one of their older ships to just test it out in the early stages. Donko, uh, mm -hmm. you're able to determine that there was a weapons test that was scheduled for the Hamilton. Uh, and you uncover uh, several captain's logs detailing the Hamilton's last hours. Uh, the Captain Talek Shran was the captain at the time. Uh, and we have the logs here. Oh. Captain's logs start at 1425.7. Having arrived in the Karina system, we are ready to begin testing the Tachyon weapon. Mr. Spruill, the weapon designer, and our chief engineer, Lieutenant Mattis, have assured me that all indications point to a positive and successful test. Mr. Spruill claims that the weapon will harness directed Tachyon bursts to degrade any structure, artificially aging it, and thus disabling any potential threat. The next log. Despite the best efforts of Chief Engineer Mattis, the Tachyon weapon is drawing ever-increasing power from our engines. The process appears irreversible. All efforts to stop or contain the weapon have failed. My first officer has suggested that we attempt to destroy the device, but Mr. Spruill is convinced that damage to the device could cause a simultaneous core breach, an explosion of Tachyon so powerful that the entire Karina system could be destroyed. Captain's Log Stardate 1426.8 the device has drained so much energy from the ship that we no longer have impulse power and life support is beginning to fail. Reports are coming in from all ship's departments of structural failures in the ship's bulkhead and superstructure. All attempts to regain control of the device have failed. Antimatter containment is beginning to fail. I have ordered a general evacuation. Captain's log supplemental. Captain Shan's log has no commentary. Instead, you see images of the Hamilton disappearing in bright brilliant flashes of light. And that is the final captain's log for the USS Hamilton. Uh, so obviously Danko would immediately debrief uh, all necessary parties, so Argent and the captain and the way team and would pro and, and would be, uh, he would be like, just as I suspected, something was very off about that. And then he would probably be like, um, at a certain point, he'd be like, um, we were so quick to blame the Romulans for possibly developing some sort of some sort of weapon. Looks like we were the ones who were developing the weapon after all. Question is, still, wh what uh, what condition that device might be in, and whether or not this catastrophic explosion that the logs suggest could envelop the entire Karina system is still possible. And if it's so, I'll say that we're was... all in the briefing room here with yeah. the captain as well. I'm sorry, Hessel. Go ahead. It's a shame that this was hidden instead of uh, perhaps ensuring that uh, due diligence was done to try to locate this vessel, this or families uh, on Karina could have perhaps saved time with their loved ones, but cannot well, change what's been done, but hopefully we can make our way there. Perhaps if we can get aboard. It appears that someone in Starfleet was perhaps embarrassed by this mm. device malfunctioning and the loss That's of a constitution class ship mm -hmm. as they should be if you don't respect a weapon you're just putting everyone's lives in jeopardy for an un 
and proper risk. Well, perhaps if we could get on board the Hamilton, find the device, the doctor might be able to reverse engineer some sort of mechanism to allow for um, inverting the process. It's a good point. And with the Romulans, assistance, we may actually be able to develop a containment system that will neutralize the risk of the device and prevent it from draining the power from the Intrepid. You're so right, Arjun. That's totally like on par. It's like way down, turbular. Um, Let's bring the Romulans with us. No, 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 no. I do not see how that would benefit a ROA team in the slightest. <laughs> Sorry, in a, contro- <laughs> in a control no, doc. setting <laughs> where information we can funnel to them in a practical manner, they might be useful letting them potentially free on a ship where the conditions could be erratic, unpredictable. Perhaps we should not bring a potential frenemy, as you might say, Doctor. I'm already concerned there's going to be Romulans there anyway. Let's not add to their numbers. I just meant like the the cat, the the leader, because then his life is also at risk. Well, unless he just uses it as a way to escape with the weapon and then we're just left holding the bag. Yeah, you're so smart. Doctor, I, I, I do believe though given this information i hopefully that would help you in your your medical research to be able to perhaps uh figure out uh some type of solution for those poor folks down there now that we have a little bit more information as to exactly what uh this weapon was trying to do i have faith in your abilities to be able to complete that yes that is uh really like radical and something i'm totally going to work on uh and I, you can actually already see um, Talus, as much as they're kind of saying stuff, is packing the med kit with things like adrenaline, anything that would help with uh, tachyon radiation that we have on logs, and just like making sure that there is a proper solution to most issues that might in- medically be encountered here for us. All right. Um, and then Commander Shelby essentially dismisses you saying, It appears that the Federation has put its own people in danger. However, unwittingly, the Federation will resolve this matter. We will not lose the colony of Morgan's Hope. I entrust that you all will do your jobs with the utmost diligence. I have complete faith in you. Dismissed. Aye, aye, Captain. Thank you, Captain. Does Dr. Talis have an eye patch and a peg leg? Yeah. No. <laughs> Arr. Uh, surfer shorts. We, we, we went As from we're, surfer to pirate, yeah. so we're like all on the water. Uh, I just, because I did it before last time. <laughs> As we're walking to the shuttle right. bay, I want as Dr. Danko, this is totally just like passing time, just be like, I noticed, Doctor, that you're not wearing your sunglasses. Oh, yeah, you're totally right. Here we go. Ah, yes. Much better. I'm sure yeah. that will come in, come in handy. As, as, as my research into indicates, because they can't see. <laughs> can't as see my research my indicates, tinted lenses are a uh, are, are a wonderful defense against uh, tachyon radiation. <laughs> I appreciate your humor, Danko. I know that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so Argent uh, told you all to bring Type Two phasers, except for Devorgern, who is bringing a phaser rifle. Is that correct? Yep. Yes. All right, the phaser rifle has Escalate, so that does give me a threat just by bringing it. Okay. Um, essentially, when you make the situation more dangerous, the situation's more dangerous back. Um, and you all pile into a shuttlecraft. Um, approaching the Hamilton is safer by shuttlecraft than by transport. Uh, transporting to the Hamilton would cause uh, the fatality entire fatality of the away team. However, you still have to go through a very dense uh, asteroid field of these rings, uh, and it requires a decent pilot. Um, So who would be flying uh, this uh, shuttlecraft? It would require Daring Khan. That's not me. 
have the daring. We would probably get a pilot to fly us. So <laughs> oh, no, I, I can do this. this. I can I handle this. Senior con, staff are all capable pilots normally. I've, uh, that would be 12 for me. Uh, 11 for Dinko. 11 for uh, Arjun, too. 8. 11 right. for Dvorgren. Yeah, right, we'd Hessel. get a pilot. So Hessel is flying, <laughs> it sounds like. We're going to crash Apparently, into the if, damn ring. If you don't have an NPC pilot, I suppose that's me. Well, what's so the I'm difficulty? Like, I'm strapping in somewhere else, and then we're just sort of sitting looking at each other like, Wouldn't it be oh, control? the captain did not... Uh, Provide us with a pilot. That's unfortunate. Okay, and so you see her kind of like relocate herself. Looking at all of our uh, supporting characters that we have here, the best daring uh, con is a uh, thirteen. So it's really not much different there. Uh, the supporting okay. characters aren't aren't nearly as specialized as you all are. Uh, so I, I think okay. it makes sense that you can, would not be putting another so can I person assist have maybe on actually, the other console to assist with like uh, predictive absolutely. navigating yes. since I'm so good at like pattern recognition and astrophysics and stuff. So uh, I have a talent, which I was yeah. thinking would be a little different, but I'm going. I would like to make a case it is applies here. Um, so I have Pathfinder. Which is when you attempt a task to plot a course through unknown territory, reduce the difficulty of the task by one, two, or three to a minimum of one for each point by which you reduce the difficulty, increase the complication range of that task. Nice. Okay, yeah, that would absolutely work here. Um, so it is difficulty two. Uh, so it, it, you're experienced in flying, flying shuttlecraft. All of you are. Some of you are better than others. Uh, the, the difficulty comes from the actual rings being so close to the uh, Hamilton, along with debris from the Hamilton itself. Um, so it makes sense that pattern recognition for the rings mm -hmm. would absolutely apply here, and two people can co-pilot uh, shuttlecraft together. Uh, Hessel for Pathfinder, uh, there's so much debris that you're picking up on the sensors uh, just at the very last second as well. Uh, Danko is tracking the major things uh, mm -hmm. to able to guide you. And with Pathfinder, you'll be able to handle anything else that's thrown at you. Yeah, I like to think that since a lot of the, um, since we're having so much sensor problems, like so much of the math right now, he's just like doing it in his head at this point and like, and then feeding, you know, sort of feeding uh, like uh, basically heading adjustments. Uh, Hessel, like, like literally split seconds before like you're about, supposed to do it. And I rolled a four. Uh, so I, I, I think it, it makes sense nice. daring science for you as well, Danko. But if you rolled a four, that's a success anyways. Uh, yeah. So daring science. Yeah, that's still what I mean. I don't have. And that actually would be a crit then if it's science, because uh, a four okay. is under yeah. five. So two successes me. there. Yeah. All right. So you're already successful with the difficulty two, But Hessel, you still get to roll and possibly bank some more momentum. And actually, okay. his, his success only applies if you get a success because right. he's assisted. So because of Pathfinder, then the difficulty would go from two to one. Uh, yeah, and two. you could also lower it to zero if you want. Mm -hmm. No, it's to a minimum of one. Oh, I'm sorry, Emmett. Uh, so I'm not trying to cheat. I'm trying to follow the rules. This isn't uh, a board game, so of course you want to cheat at this. Most <laughs> of times I don't think you're trying yeah. to cheat. I just think you like naturally have an inclination for it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I never try, but I <laughs> succeed <laughs> with the concerning regularity. Uh, so daring seven con is five. Um, I don't have any focuses. I have mm, no, I don't have any focuses. Oh, I wish I had focuses. Um, I rolled uh. 11 and a 5. Is that two successes then for you? Because you had a 12, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, is the 5 enough to get you uh, uh, under your focus? A, I'm not applying any particular focus, so had I been applying a focus, oh, okay, it would have been yeah. great, you were but I don't have a relevant focus. focus. Yeah. Okay, uh, but you got two successes. Difficulty and 1, Donko one. got two successes, so that is three momentum that you are banking or you could Ooh. spend on other things here if you'd like. I'll... Spend one bank two. Okay, what are you spending it on? Um, the only thing would be obtain information with a one, with a one spend. 
which really? it, it would be fine to say that you're like doing a sweep around the Hamilton yeah, if there yeah. is something that you would Looking like to obtain the... information for. So you basically or you can just make it. Definitely want to look for the Bellarax. Okay. Uh, is that something that we can be The shuttle itself here? would not be able to would not have nearly enough advanced sensors to pick up a cloaked warbird, but uh, you'd be able to look for other Romulan activity if that's something you'd like yeah. to do. Yeah, okay. they, they might be shuttling <laughs> like right alongside us. Uh, go ahead and... Stuck uh, in rush hour. <laughs> bank Just the momentum for now. And go over top of them and, and, <laughs> and flick the bird at them. Because uh, you were going to get something along those lines anyways, and I don't want to cheat you of it. Uh, so as your shuttlecraft approaches the Constitution-class starship, you see that it is in much worse condition than you expected. Given the amount of damage that the ship has taken, you wonder if the hull is still intact, if the ship even maintains a breathable atmosphere. Uh, the tachyon bursts from the weapon are causing the ship to deteriorate at a much faster rate than you expected. Something has made these bursts uh, increase uh, in their rate. The starboard warp, warp nacelle is badly damaged from meteor impacts as well, and as your shuttlecraft circles the Hamilton, you see that the ship's shuttle bay doors are open, and a Romulan shuttlecraft has landed. The Romulans have beat you to the Hamilton. Well, you dang. are able... You are able, we with saw... your piloting check, to be able to land in that uh, shuttle bay as well. It does appear to be the only place in the Hamilton that is structurally stable enough to hold your shuttlecraft. Let's uh, vac suit up. We don't know what we're going to be facing in here. And uh, Devorgan, figure out how to disable that Romulan shuttle so it doesn't leave until we're ready for it to leave. Lieutenant Commander. All right, so you all put on your EV suits. Uh, Hessel, Donko, you bring in the shuttle for a landing, uh, and then you're able to put on your EV suits as well. It takes a minute or so to do so. Uh, you're next to the Romulan shuttle. Uh, you don't necessarily get any activity from it, but a simple sensor sweep does show a Romulan life form aboard. Well, if anything else, we should be outnumbering them. We just see the one. So if they're messing with this and that has increased the uh, speed of the uh, the frequency, uh, we may not have long to uh, interfere with what they're doing. That's a good point, Commander Hessel. Let's uh, dissuade this Romulan quickly, take him into custody, uh, and then uh, get to the source of this tachyon disruption. You all step off the shuttlecraft and into the deserted shuttle bay. The sickly green of the Romulan shuttlecraft draws your attention first. Uh, you notice that it is sealed up tightly. Otherwise, the shuttle bay is littered with trash and debris, the remains of a quick evacuation years and years prior. Several large containers sit against the wall with their lids open, and from the state of things, you can assume that the USS Hamilton was evacuated in quite a rush. Uh, the... Romulan shuttlecraft, you can access the outside of it, but you know that all the vital systems are protected from the inside. Uh, it, it is, it's locked. It, it's no way in without forcing your way in. Federation Commander Argent to Romulan. I put it on a broad, a, a short range broad. Yeah, absolutely. Broadcast. Come uh, in. We know you're there. Come in. You get the open comm link, but there is no verbal response. You know that you have connected uh, with the, the shuttlecraft and they can hear everything you're saying, but there is no reply. We are working with your sub commander um, to talk uh, in a joint operation to prevent this tachyon emission system from further damaging the Karina system. Um, however, 
we can't afford to have unknown elements interfering with our joint efforts. So please engage me in conversation or we will have to seal you into your shuttle and damage your nacelles to prevent your shuttle from departing. I think this would be con presence. Um, as you're arguing uh, over yep. protocol, I- essentially. Uh, you weren't necessarily going with intimidation. Um, I-, I think uh, we're going to, because you're mentioning to talk, you're going to lower the difficulty. Uh, so it would have started at three, and now you're going down to two. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend one point of momentum to get a third dice. Uh, con presence for me is a 15. I do have a focus in persuasion. Uh, so I think that would apply. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 13, five and a 17. So three successes, three successes. You get a hesitant reply, uh, after a few moments, this is Ulan Jarak. I have been ordered to keep this shuttle sealed. I cannot let you aboard, regardless of Subcommander Detox orders. I appreciate your uh, your candor, Ulan. Uh, we're going to have to disable your shuttle so you can't take off. So you can stay in there, or you can come out and join us, and then we can go talk to the rest of your folks. You may not disable my shuttle. That would be considered an act of aggression and would be reported immediately. That's We're comfortable with that since you are currently on the wrong side of the neutral zone in a Federation territory and have invaded a Federation starship. So I think we're going to be okay when this all comes out in the wash. Uh, I don't think once the Romulan High Command finds out that you've all been captured and the circumstances in which you're captured, I'm fairly certain uh, they're going to disavow your existence altogether. It's your call, Ulan, uh, but I've got places to go, so we need to move this on. There is a long pause, and then the shuttle engines begin to power up uh, as you get the sense that he had to go ask someone else for orders. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's going to take a, a, a bit for the shuttle engine to essentially warm up and power up. Uh, so you do have time to try and disable this, uh, whether through engineering or whether through means of force. Lieutenant Commander Arjit just is going to contact the Intrepid. Uh, Captain Shelby, we've got a Romulan shuttle that I believe is going to be departing the shuttle bay here shortly. If possible, move the Intrepid into an intercept arc and put a tractor beam on that. Understood, Commander Argent. Um, It appears that the Intrepid will be able to get close to the Hamilton, but not close enough to tractor beam the shuttle. If they leave the rings, we will be sure to bring them in. Uh, Commander Danko, uh, Dvorkin, do you know enough about Romulan technology to know where to shoot this shuttle to prevent it from activating its cloaking device? Well, we can certainly try. <laughs> we'll find out. That would be a role uh, yeah. as you're shooting it to try and get to the best spot. Uh, I, it's going to be either security, uh, which I think it would be, I, I think it'd be daring security here, uh, or reason engineering. Either one, uh, whichever approach you go for. I would probably assist Dvorgan because he actually has the rifle and everything, so he'd probably be more accurate of a shot. So I would probably just assist with knowledge. Um, so if I was looking to assist, uh, you said reason engineering. Well, how about we combine the two then? You do reason engineering. Dvorgan is mm-hmm. the one making the shot, so it's going to be, uh, daring security. So, okay. um, can I, since I came up with a plan of action, uh, can I go ahead and spend a point of momentum to create a trait that is our battle plan, which would then activate my talent plan of action? Uh, which would mean that it reduces the difficulty by one, and if they succeed, they get two points of bonus momentum to use in this action. Absolutely. Uh, So it would have been difficulty three. It's now going down to difficulty two. 
Uh, and go ahead and add the trait uh, in- into our text there. Yeah. Would feel free to say no on this. Uh, I know it's because uh, this is specifically like Ramin design. I know engineering would be an ideal kind of focus, but what about cultural studies? Like if I've studied like other cultures, like specifically Romulans, no is totally fine. Cultural I'm just... studies doesn't come in very often. Let's go ahead and do it. It's literally yeah, the I... only thing that I think would make a whole lot of sense. So just in case I roll low. Which and I uh, did. Aaron, Aaron, while you're editing our traits too, would you also add thin atmosphere uh, yep. as there is no real air here? So you got two successes there? I, well, I rolled my one die for assist and I did roll a five and my science is a five. Oh no, you said engineering. Sorry. Right. So it's just one success. Sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry. So Dvorgan, go ahead and roll your daring security. And if you succeed, you'll get an additional three success. I'm sorry, success and two momentum uh, from this. Okay, I'm rolling two dice, correct? I wasn't sure if I picked yes. up the third you, one. You roll two, Arshin. you can spend okay. a momentum to get a third. Yeah, so okay, roll. that's what, I, yeah, I'm gonna spend it because I know Argent just set this up because yeah, my daring is not good. Oh, I got two fours and an 11. All right, uh, so did you have a focus uh, that you were using on this? So I was, oh yeah, I meant to ask that. Um, so I have, Security system. Oh, actually, I don't think that would necessarily fit here. It would either be strategy or deflect or operations. If we're saying that like a cloaking system is a related enough system, and with the amount of research we've been doing as of late on cloaking technology, it would be a loose association. Uh, w- what was the actual words again? I'm sorry. The actual, the actual title of your focus. Oh yeah, deflect or operations, or that's one, and then another one, strategy. Let's go with. I don't think either of those would apply here. No, I also uh, have phasers, you're not but that good. would just be like controlling the shot. I think. Oh, phasers would. Work. Phasers, you're, you're using just, a phaser you're, you're rifle. You're shooting a phaser, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah I'm thinking more of like what I'm trying to hit versus what I'm shooting with. But if we're taking that, yeah, phasers absolutely that. works. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, then if so I'm you, using the phaser focus, then one of those fours would match my security skill. So you had two fours and your security yes. is four. So yes. that is four successes just from the fours. And the 11 was under your total daring security of what? It matches it because my daring and my security okay, so are 11. Beats it, uh, meets it. Yeah. Uh, or meets it, beats it. Uh, so you're getting five there uh, plus a sixth success from Danko and then an additional two bonus momentum from Argent. Uh, so that is a. Uh, we lowered the difficulty to two. That is four uh, momentum that it can be banked and then two that can be spent right now if you have an idea of like a trait that you could add to the scene, uh, something that might uh, change uh, the narrative like, in your favor. Like disabled cloaking device? <laughs> uh, there is no actual cloaking device on this shuttle. Oh, there's not? Well, okay. What about like a more general? Because we know there are other Romulans on the ships. So like what if this just creates like a panic so they're less organized and they're less disciplined so it reduces their threat on us if we bump into them yeah let's call it a a locked retreat Romulan run escape route yeah Romulan run around yeah uh so it, essentially they they've got nowhere to run uh, and they know this now uh, so as the, the engines are firing up on the shuttle you you hear the hum as they come to life uh Danko uh, starts pointing a certain way. Dvorgan, you pull up your phaser rifle, which is a beefy phaser, uh, and you blast at very specific points. It does not destroy the shuttle, but it does disable it. You see that steam starts coming off. uh, All all sorts of gassy chemicals uh, shoot out. You're all wearing EV suits, so you don't have to worry about any sort of harm coming to you. Uh, But the hum slowly dies down, uh, and this shuttle is uh, essentially deactivated. It will not be leaving anytime soon without some repairs. After making the shot, this is just for flavor. Zorgern's uh, forehead's going to be beat with some sweat, and he's going to tap his communicator. Or is Argent behind him? I'm I'm right there with you, yeah. Okay, he's going to look over his shoulder, and he's going to be like, uh, Lieutenant Commander, how airtight are these Starfleet members on this? Because if I incite a war, I don't want to be named in the do- in the dossier. You're going to be fine, Devorgan. If if things go sideways, we're probably not getting off the Hamilton anyway. So don't worry I'm about it. Feel in the better. Moment. Okay. But get, go ahead and increase the power output of your phaser rifle there and seal his hatch so he's not coming out of that uh, shuttle anytime in the future. Oh, yeah. Welded shut. Okay. 
And uh, go Captain, go ahead and, and launch that second shuttle uh, with the security team. We're gonna need uh, we're gonna need a security squad here watching the shuttles uh, as the Romulans are eventually gonna have to try to escape back this way. Understood, Lieutenant Commander. Expect them in 15 minutes. All right. The Romulans know you are on the ship now, uh, and you also know that these tachyon bursts are increasing, uh, and you, being so close to them, will suffer aging uh, the longer you stay on the ship. Uh, so possibly waiting the 15 minutes for security to oh, come... No. We're going to go. We're going to go. But Would be a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, so you... We'll say that you're able to weld uh, the the shuttle shut. Uh, so he, uh, it, it's not that he can't cut his way through if he's got the right tools, but it would definitely slow him down uh, inside. Uh, and it's the best you can hope for right now without destroying the ship or going in and get him, getting him yourself. Um, and you begin heading through uh, the hallways of uh, the Hamilton. You did proper research. You have schematics of the ship. Uh, and you uh, know that your best bet uh, from uh, the captain's logs and just the general schematics of the ship for you to find this device would be to go to the engineering bay. Um, so you step into one of these hallways. It's got very thin atmosphere. Without EV suits, you would not be able to breathe whatsoever. The shuttle bay had a bit of atmosphere. Uh, it appears that there are pockets of air here and there, uh, but... Aaron, you added thin atmosphere to our traits, uh, so that applies now. Um, you exit the shuttle bay and enter the main corridor that runs the length of the ship. Um, you know that at the far end of this corridor would be a turbo lift that leads to the bridge, but it's going to be a long walk. Um, along this corridor, you will also be able to access engineering. Um, this corridor is crowded with debris from the original uh, crew's evacuation uh, and from structural damage that's happened. There are various parts where the uh, floor above you has just fell and crushed through uh, or the floor has fallen uh, out from under you. So you have to be very careful in how you pick your way through this corridor to make your way to the uh, engineering bay. Uh, the deck is just disintegrated from the effects of the tachyon emissions, uh, making this whole corridor fraught with danger. Um, Derek, uh, we're going to be picking on you again. Um, give me a insight security roll here, and you don't know why. Okay, so I need a 14 or lower. Any, Definitely not an ambush. Do you use focuses when, def when defending against stuff? You can use a focus on here. I would accept strategy. Okay, cool. Uh, I didn't get anything to get a bonus with that. I got a, a. I need to be low fourteen. I got a fourteen and a twelve. Two successes. All right. Uh, it was difficulty uh, four lowered by one to three. Two successes is not quite enough. Uh, so you notice a bit too late as the group of you are making your way through the hallway. There is a spot where the upper floor has fallen down. Uh, and essentially blockaded the hallway, you are in a, a bottleneck, really. Uh, there, you're out in the open, walking straight forward, and then there is a flash of uh, the flickering light uh, that glances off uh, one of a, the Romulan's disruptor pistols as they step out from the debris and begin blasting at you all. We are going into combat here. They are ambushing, so they will go first. Um, and... Uh, they are also behind cover. You see at least two of them uh, behind cover here. I'm going to spend some threat uh, as they're going to roll a couple extra dice here. Uh, not that that matters because, you know, I roll poorly all the time, right? Oh, I like rolling lots of dice. This is fun. It is fun. Uh, okay, so that is two successes, which is exactly what you need uh, to uh, hit someone with a ranged attack that's not behind cover. If they're behind cover, it's a contested roll. Um, and I probably should have determined who I'm targeting here. Commander Hessel. Uh, <laughs> that was the We're in a new month. We're in a new month. What are you doing? I don't know. Uh, Commander Would Hessel, a disruptor blast. It's... it's Still this year. It's still Would this the command year. communications officer be like towards the front of like this advanced team? Would we know there's like hostiles in the area? This is severity four. Uh, and uh, like, like I said, I, I'm going to be going hard in this campaign. 
Uh, so I'm going to be spending some threat to increase it to severity five. Um, you can turn this into strain if you would like. Uh, as long as you have enough strain, strain is equal to your fitness plus any talents you have. Uh, essentially, you're able to uh, come up with a narrative reason for why this would not actually injure you. And instead, it just uh, takes some effort. It, it takes a little bit of uh, energy out of you. Or you could take the injury. Um, okay, so walking through this a little bit. So we've got fitness. So my fitness is nine. And Sarah, you said it was... It was severity five, yes. So you would be taking five strain here, uh, okay. which uh, ha only has a narrative effect here, not mechanical, for you to be taking some strain. Okay. All um, right, so uh, what does this look like as the green disruptor uh, starts firing at you? So I would say that she... I'm trying to think of, like, maybe she was kind of distracted with something. So, you know, kind of like she wouldn't necessarily have been kind of like... Frontline, frontline, but you know, kind of mid wave, maybe. Um, and she was kind of looking, you know, kind of, kind of looking down a little bit at, you know, kind of a pad or whatever, and you know, kind of trying to plan out where they needed to go, and didn't necessarily catch sort of like a, a verbal, maybe there was sort of like a non-verbal, uh, you know, motion that you know we had some hostiles ahead and, and didn't uh, catch that. So I'll say that's Absolutely. how it kind of. Uh, and sense. the the she blaster does does miss you uh, because you're spending strain instead, uh, and you all begin to duck for cover. You move to the sides of the hallway, trying to protect yourselves as much as you can. The ambush means that the uh, Romulan goes first, but then it goes back to the players like normal, uh, and you can go in any order here. Uh, if if it's okay, I'll go first because then I can trigger follow my lead, which will give. The, and then I'll, and we'll get to keep the initiative for free anyway, and that'll give the next person a bonus. So, All right. I, uh, you see uh, Lieutenant Commander Argent tracks where that disruptor fire came from, and he reaches out with his mind to try to telepathically crush the thoughts of this Romulan. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that kind of ignores the cover because you know the Romulan is there and it's not yeah, it's a, a, it's a, a piercing attack. attack. It, yeah. it gets piercing. So. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Hold on. I gotta look up one. Two, one uh, so it's going to be difficulty two then. Yeah. It's a difficulty two. Presence plus security. My presence is 12. Security is four. So it's 16. I'm going to use that one momentum to try to bank us some momentum if possible. Um, and since I am setting this up to set up the next person in line by telepathically telling them how to track these guys. Uh, can I use combat tactics as my yes, focus? Yes, for sure. Oh, and I have to spend one point of determination. Uh, so that's automatically going to make one of these or one. So I'll just take that aside. I'll take the lowest one aside already as a one, but I got a two and a six as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five successes. Uh, you, you said you were spending the determination after you rolled. That gives you a no. re-roll, doesn't it? No, no, I've spent it, I had to spend the determination to activate the follow my lead, which automatically makes it a one. Gotcha, okay. Uh, so how many successes? Five successes. All right, uh, we said difficulty two, so that banks you three momentum, uh, and you take out this Romulan. Uh, one hit is enough to take him out. You see the body crumple down. There is still another Romulan behind cover with the phaser out, blasting. Uh, do you have a minor action that you'd like to take, or are you good? Uh, no, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and uh, activate my talent that allows me to keep the uh, keep the initiative for free. All right. And then the next person who acts, my minor action is to tell whoever's going next you know the romulan's right there i've locked into his into his his uh alpha waves i can detect his mind fire there um so basically i'm giving you the aid action but it's an automatic one on so you'll if you succeed you'll get two successes from me all right uh so who wants to go next I suppose I should, since I have the rifle and I also have an okay security score. You right. should. 
Uh, so it's going to be daring security to shoot the rifle here. Okay, I have a question only because my control is significantly better. What kinds of situation? Because this is control is like precision and accuracy. I'm sorry, so. you're right. Uh, okay, control security is to shoot, not daring. My bad. Gotcha. Okay, no, you're daring good. is I for melee. I, I got confused. No worries. Okay. Um, all right, and then I'm gonna take a momentum for an extra dice, and we'll see what I can do. All right. Uh, and because. Uh, they are behind cover. This is a contested roll. Um, okay. I guess I'll use my phaser uh, focus because, well, I'm shooting. <laughs> Makes sense. All right. I need, so let's see, with security and control, I need 15 or less. I got a 7, an 8, and a 16. So just two successes. All right. I rolled a 1 and a 5. So the 1 is actually two successes, and then the 5... Uh, it is an additional extra success, so that is three. Uh, so oh. your fate, yeah. I gave him two successes from my aid action, oh, so you. Go. Oh yeah, that's it. I forgot. Thank you for reminding me. So that put puts you to four. That means you hit. Uh, in uh, your severity is four or five, I think, with the phaser rifle. But regardless, this is just a nameless Romulan centurion. What does it look like as you take him out? Um, you ask. I'm assuming this shoots some sort of laser emission. So it's just going to blast a hole uh, in his torso. Yeah, uh, it just creates a, a giant burn. Uh, and essentially, uh, well, I think with we're it stunning. set to max stunning. We're stunning. Oh, yeah, so that would actually cause threat. <laughs> He's very thoroughly did you set stunned. It to stun? Did you set it to stun or did you want to kill? Oh, you can't kill. <laughs> actually, That's no, yeah, call. because I was so worried about this, I think it would be set to stun just uh, okay. even though okay. I do security. Like, yeah. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate you coming in with the rules. That He's got a really a big burn mark on his chest. All right. Uh, so, you, yeah, the, the the phaser rifle is such a powerful stun that it still burns his clothing, but he falls unconscious uh, and he is still alive. You know he's going to be out for a good amount of time, uh, and you're able to continue moving th forward through this hallway. So you Wait, you well, take the do. proper we precautions of binding them uh, so that they, yeah, and taking their weapons. Uh, tossing them a, a few floors down where you find a hole in the, the structure of the ship. Um, and you continue moving on to the engineering bay. Uh, again, you have all the schematics uh, of the ship. You're able to see uh, where you're going. Uh, you move a little bit more cautiously because you know the Romulans are setting ambushes. They are communicating with each other. They know which direction you're heading. Uh, can approaching we, uh... Yeah, can go we, ahead. Can we pick up the Romulan life? Can can Doctor Talus pick up Romulan life signs with her tricorder? Uh, I think you'd be able to with the tricorder. It would be a little bit more difficult here as you're dealing with a lot of. Uh, there's so much happening with the sensors being so close to Karina Ten. Uh, I, I think this would be a difficulty one uh, insight medicine. I can certainly rather than just a standard that. roll. Uh, instead of a standard success, I think it needs a roll. At least that way, where they don't be able to ambush us anymore. Yes. Um, Personally, at least. Uh, da, 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 no, I can't probably. I was going to see, because I've got empathy as well from my Betazoid side, if I can use that as a sense as well beyond our group along with the tricorder, but uh, just the tricorder is good uh, if, if that's a little bit too much. I, I think the empathy, you, you could frame this as using uh, presence instead of insight, if you'd like. Uh, either way, I think medicine makes sense. Yes. Okay. I'm going to stick with insight. Um, I'm going to use one momentum to add a, is it two momentum or one momentum to add a dice to my pool? Uh, one, one for the, the first one momentum for the first. Two for the next one. Just one yeah. then. I'm going to spend one momentum. Speaking of momentum, because of um, Arjun's two extra successes, I would have banked momentum that I had used to basically cancel it out, right? Uh, you would have had one extra one. success yeah. right. uh, that would have been banked, yes. Okay, perfect. Right. And that's been accounted for. I already took care of it. Oh, my God. Um, so I rolled two 17s and a two. Uh, and uh, the two you is You only obviously needed one success, success though. Luckily, uh, I, I got it. All right. Uh, yeah, so you're able to... The dice uh, are not kind to me today. Yikes. Not at all. We'll say that the tricorder, uh, with the way... Uh, the range of the ship will say it's essentially medium range, uh, which uh, the 2D20 system has like zones, which is like two zones away. 
uh, which you'll be able to determine most of the entire hall. You'll be able to sense throughout the rest of the hallway that there are no more Romulans. Uh, you're not necessarily able to find Romulans uh, in the farthest reaches of the ship, but if there's any in the immediate vicinity, it'll ping and let you know. Um, as you make your way towards engineering, uh, you hear the unmistakable hum of the active warp core still powering the ship. Uh, continued signs of the ship's deterioration give you pause as panels hang loosely from the walls with only thin, worn wiring holding them up. Most of the consoles here in engineering are malfunctioning or not working at all. The consoles that appear to be functioning look like they risk shorting out at any moment. As you move into engineering, uh, you do not, find, do not find any uh, signs of Romulan uh, life. Uh, you move towards the antimatter intermix valve and you see that there is a cylindrical device directly attached to it. This device is approximately two meters in height in one meter in diameter. It's very similar in appearance to a photon torpedo as if it was stood on one end. What are you all doing? When you say photon torpedo, do you mean like it looks like Federation engineering? Uh, it does, yes. It looks like Federation okay. engineering. So it's like it's 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 presumably the device that we've been we've been searching for? Yes, likely the weapon that caused the Hamilton to move forty years forward in time. I mean, Vice is just going to see if he can figure out some way to disable it. He's going to um, carefully, because like effectively this is a bomb, uh, and he probably would be calling on the doc to help him out uh, and figure out if we can sort this out. Like he's scanning it. He's kind of trying to understand the way in which the energy is sort of being routed uh, and figuring yeah. out if there's a way in which the two of us can like essentially diffuse this. And right. Stephen, the warp core yeah. is working. Um, how much, like, if we ask computer something, is that active in this uh, ship, or is that gone? All of the power on the ship is being driven directly to this okay. device. That's why they had to evacuate it. They couldn't even support life support anymore. Uh, they couldn't power right. life support anymore. So, no, the computers are entirely down. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's why there's no atmosphere, and the lights are flickering on and off. Uh, it is just the all of the power uh, is going towards this device uh, that's just sucking it all up. Uh, Donko and Talus, if you uh, mm -hmm. are spending time looking at this device, I'm not going to ask for a roll yet. Uh, it's just going to take some time to figure out exactly uh, what these components are, how they interact with each other. It's just going to take a, a minute or two to do so. Uh, what are the other three of you doing as this is happening? So Commander Arjun would be looking at the areas around engineering, setting up um, some cover and choke points, assuming that the Romulans are going to be making a move on engineering at some point so that we could set up interlocking fields of fire so we could stop them while our scientists are, are dealing with the device. All right. Uh, this sounds like reason security to me. Uh, and if someone would like to assist, they can, but you don't have to. Anybody want to help? My reason security is going to uh, come in at 12. I can assist. I have uh, 15 in reason and security. And I okay. will spend one point of momentum to get a third dice. All right. So, uh, Dvorgern, uh, go ahead and roll your one die. Uh, and, and I, can I think your strategy focus. focus. Yeah. Yes. And my combat tactics focus would still work. I think so, too, yes. Right? Yeah. Okay, so I got a four and a I ten not nice to you and a today, fourteen. Nope. I, saw that I got a nineteen. Nineteen? Mm -hmm. uh, is that a single success for you, Argent? No, it's three successes. Three successes. Okay. Uh, I, I would have said difficulty one on this. Uh, so you're absolutely able to succeed. Uh, if you'd like to spend momentum to add a trait, uh, I, I think this would be the time to do it. Okay, I'll spend the two momentum I got to add the trait um uh impenetrable defense or yeah absolutely sounds great uh hessel what is happening is devorgern and argent are going around they're assessing the this engineering bay and they're pulling up panels they're moving them uh creating all sorts of cover and barriers uh so this was me trying to look through the rules a little bit is there anything that i can do with my strain like to like uh, essentially it requires resting like uh for uh, a, a few moments to a few hours uh so on on the ship no not while you're still in the ev suit you're not gonna be able to get rid of your strain 
Understood. Um, I would say that Hessel would be um, trying to do a little bit of both, like helping either, but like not going too far out, but kind of like maybe trying to set up some cover like inside this area in case we, you know, kind of have to, to defend it a little bit. So a little bit of help with um, Dvorah and, and Argent and then kind of just poking over and just kind of being the person that's really unhelpful that's kind of like, how's it going? <laughs> she goes over to like Denko and the doc, just like, All right. how's it going? Uh, so any more minutes and then just relaying information back and forth. Uh, this device, this tachyon device really does only have space for like two people uh, to work on it. So Hessel, as you're going, like you said, being the unhelpful person, you really are like over their shoulder uh, <laughs> looking uh, at, at all the pieces. Like occasionally you stick an arm like pointing, have you factored in this? Um, Hessel Talus, uh, you are able to get to the bottom of this, uh, essentially. Uh, you realize that uh, this is a, a tachyon device, and it has been uh, refitted with Romulan technology. Uh, so the, the core of this is uh, the device that likely sent it forward in time. The Romulans have already gotten on the Hamilton and attached something else. Uh, it looks like with the idea that the Romulan uh, uh, science was looking to contain uh, the Tachyonverse, it wasn't just contain, it was also direct and magnify. Uh, they were trying to build a, an analogous to a telescope for this Tachyonverse. You know that you can disable this. Uh, it's going to require a challenge. Uh, first, you'd have to reconfigure the auxiliary chroniton coils. Then you have to decouple the tertiary injectors. You have to nullify the master filament. And then finally, you have to convert the emergency tachyon stabilizer. As you're going through, you've discovered this process. That is when, Dr. Talus, your tricorder begins beeping. The deep, 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 as you are picking up Romulan life signs. And we are going to end here for the session. Uh, as you have uh, established a bit of a base uh, defensive, uh, and a couple of you are going to have to possibly uh, work under fire. We'll see how it goes. So you can always try to talk your way out, right? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. We didn't end <laughs> up putting a hole in that one Romulan, right? No, because <laughs> that would have been difficult to walk yeah. back. Because that would have been really hard <laughs> to walk back. Just a big old burn mark. <laughs> we stopped. All right. Uh, thank you all for playing. As always, it's great fun with you all. Uh, it, I, I'm really enjoying Star Trek. Uh, so we'll see how this uh, adventure, I think we'll definitely be wrapping up next session, but you never know how it goes. Uh, let's do some shout outs. Aaron, what's going on with Garblag? Uh, so sadly, there will not be any Marvel multiverse tomorrow because work is uh, is treating me horribly and I actually have to That's do rough, some. Buddy. Uh, but we'll be back the following week. However, on Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can check out with Lewis, who is going to be starting uh, the new One Ring campaign. Uh, so it'll be a group of uh, Durans folks and a group of uh, Nagra dwarves delving into Moria at the beginning of the forging of Small Doom's adventure. So definitely check it out. That's awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I, I, it's no secret that I enjoyed playing a dwarf in one ring. Uh, Jeff, what do we got going on with Ollie Caggers? Uh, lots of stuff. Uh, what do we got next Thursday? We've got some Simba room. You can see a bunch of the people on the screen right now playing in it. All the important people. Uh, then on, uh, on Friday, <laughs> and Friday, uh, Aaron, what are we doing? Uh, so on Friday, we'll, we'll be welcoming back uh, some Dragonborn, back to the Free League Dragonborn, some Myth, uh, Mayhem, and Merriment is our, uh, our our group. We were introduced to uh, two weeks ago, and, and they're on a hot air balloon looking for a giant tortoise. Should be fun. Yeah, and similarly, the important people are in that game, too. Uh, <laughs> then... <laughs> It's just working out really well. Uh, then on Saturday, uh, we're going to be, we should be wrapping up our run of uh, of this guy's game, 
yeah. Huckleberry. I believe we're going to be playing some more Divine Comedy. We sh- we're at the end. I'm pretty sure this will be the last session uh, of uh, of the Divine Comedy, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see who gets off. Uh, who gets off the ship? If anyone gets off the ship, they literally just um, spoiler alert. Uh, killed the captain and the crew that were actually piloting uh, the ship. So I'm sure that's not going to be a problem uh, at all. What could so, go wrong? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, what else we got? Monday, we should be back to Fried Empire. We've been off for Fried Empire for a little while because we were doing some ragtag, which is like same universe, different system. But we're actually back to Fried Empire. Uh, very excited to get back to that. And then obviously we'll be back for this. Uh, on Tuesday with more Star Trek. Uh, also, check out the Adventures in Lolly Gagging uh, YouTube page and podcast where you can get all of our past games, especially on YouTube, you can get all of our past games, uh, which goes back at this point uh, five years. And if yeah. you hurry now and go follow, you could be the 4,000th subscriber on YouTube. And I have been given permission by my tray that once we hit 4,000, I am officially allowed to delete the channel as long as I keep running games offline. And uh, <laughs> that was the negotiation, and that's what's happened. So if you don't like that idea, you know who to blame. All right. Uh, and can so uh, someone in the audience uh, do me a favor and uh, count up all the times that I have mistakenly said phaser instead of disruptor? Uh, I, I'm sure we got to get a tally yeah. going for this whole it hurts scenario. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay, it's Stephen. Okay. I we heard Aaron soul more. Don't worry. It doesn't bother me, Stephen. <laughs> I'm following along. Right, com- it's a completely different <laughs> energy pattern. Completely different effects. Like you cannot stun somebody with a Romulan <laughs> disruptor. It just disrupts tissue. It just yep. disintegrates things. Yes, it does a good job. Oh, Lord have mercy. See, chat, the laser pew pew. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. all. See? Yeah, laser pew pew. I agree. You know what it means. And phasers are not <laughs> lasers either. They're just a- take it from a guy who works with lasers every day. A phaser is not a laser. <laughs> Hashtag tachyons exist as well. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. I'll get the hang of it by the end of the campaign. There will be at least okay. one session where I, I, I don't say uh, phaser versus disruptor. <laughs> Tell you what, you do that, there'll be a prize for you. <laughs> so everyone like keep prizes. track. Yeah. You got anything yeah, else, man? No, I'm good. I'm good. We good? You sure? We good. Okay. Yeah. All right. If that's the case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to raid uh, Perception Studio. They are playing a game I love. One of the first games I actually got in tabletop role-playing game. Uh, Fiasco. Uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead and give them a raid. Enjoy that. Enjoy the rest of your night. We'll see you later in the week. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Long prosper. Peace Bye. and long life. <laughs> <laughs>